One of the most common questions we get here at FreshCap is, does cordyceps really grow on bugs? And the answer to that is, it depends. Many of you might have seen the video from the BBC of cordyceps mushrooms turning ants into zombies. And if you haven't seen it, I'll link to that in the description below. It's actually really cool. There are hundreds of species of cordyceps, and yes, they are all parasitic, mainly infecting ants and other insects, causing them to go crazy, do their bidding, and eventually fruit through their corpse. Luckily, there are other ways to produce cordyceps that doesn't involve zombie insects, and that's what I wanted to talk about today. When it comes to medicinal mushrooms, there are two types of cordyceps that are important, namely Cordyceps sinensis and Cordyceps militaris. The most famous of these, Cordyceps sinensis, does actually grow on insects. It parasitizes the larvae of ghost moths, and eventually it grows from the head of the dead caterpillar high in the Himalayan mountains. That's why cordyceps is sometimes referred to as the caterpillar fungus, and it's actually pretty creepy. Now, wild harvested cordyceps sinensis is a medicinal mushroom with a long history of use in traditional Chinese medicine. It's known for many medicinal benefits, but most prominently, it's thought to improve the efficiency in which we take oxygen from our lungs to the rest of the cells in our body, helping with endurance, physical stamina, and athletic performance. The problem with Cordyceps sinensis, however, is that the fruiting body can't yet be cultivated. Now, I've actually heard that some cultivators are slowly figuring this out, but as of now, it's not being cultivated commercially. It needs to be harvested from the wild. Unfortunately, it's very rare. It only occurs at high elevations in the Tibetan Plateau, and it's pretty hard to get. True Cordyceps sinensis fruiting body is insanely expensive. For example, this small bag of Cordyceps, which is about 10 grams, retails for the equivalent of 700 US dollars. At that price, it really makes no sense to use Cordyceps sinensis as a medicinal supplement. The mycelium of Cordyceps sinensis, however, can be grown on grain or in liquid fermentation, but you will not be able to get the valuable fruiting bodies by growing it this way. Now, luckily, there is another species of cordyceps with similar medicinal profile that actually can be grown commercially without using any insects. It's called Cordyceps militaris, and it's a super popular medicinal mushroom traditionally used for fatigue, for general weakness, and improved respiratory function. So if it doesn't have to grow on bugs, then how is it actually cultivated? Cordyceps militaris is grown differently than most other medicinal mushrooms. Mushrooms like turkey tail or reishi are typically grown on logs, but cordyceps grows best on a substrate of white rice and soy. Now, keep in mind, even though it grows on rice, true Cordyceps militaris is not a mycelium on grain product because the mushroom does actually produce a fruiting body that can be harvested and processed into a supplement. The process involves sterilizing a mixture of rice and soy in a tray, typically about six parts rice and about one part soy. The tray is covered by plastic and the rim is wrapped with a cloth that serves as a filter. This substrate needs to be steam sterilized in order to kill off any competing bacteria or fungus or moles and give cordyceps the best chance to actually take over the substrate. Once removed from steam sterilization and cooled, this rice-soy mixture is inoculated with the mycelium of cordyceps militaris. In this sterile environment, it's free to grow throughout the whole mixture and eventually fruit. Now the filter that's wrapped around the rim actually allows it to breathe so it can continue to grow through the substrate without running into any competing organisms and getting contaminated. Once the cordyceps mycelium has completely taken over the substrate, the cordyceps is brought to the fruiting room where it can actually fruit. Temperatures in there are low, around 13 degrees Celsius, which actually encourages slow but steady growth of the cordyceps mushroom fruiting body. This slow growth increases the level of active compounds in the mushroom. The fruiting room also has blue LED lights, which encourage even more fruiting bodies to form. And if you see these trays, you'll see that they're absolutely covered in cordyceps militaris fruiting bodies. They look just like Cheetos and it's super cool. So after about a month or so in this environment, the mushrooms are completely grown out and they're ready to be harvested. From there, the mushrooms can be dried, powdered and extracted and eventually used as a supplement. So there you have it. 
cordyceps does indeed grow on bugs, but depending on the species, it doesn't have to be grown that way. So hopefully you weren't too grossed out by this, and now you know the major difference between the two most commonly used species of cordyceps. Thanks so much for watching this video. As always, if you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments below. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. Uh, we always love to spread the knowledge and the magic of mushrooms.